The jab moves only half the distance. But here's the clever thing. There's no real loss of speed. Let's take a look at a technique that I affectionately like to call the half jab. I'd call it a half jab because it travels pretty much half the distance of a regular jab. And it was used quite extensively and to great success by such greats as Lennox Lewis. Um, there are advantages and disadvantages to doing it this way. Let me show you what they are and then you can choose whether or not you would like to use this technique. For Hi, I'm Andy Wake, head coach at Boxercise. Over 29 years, I've taken 1,100 Boxercise courses, training over 18,000 people to do Boxercise myself, and been responsible for the development of 28,000. This is our YouTube channel. I hope you like it. Firstly, how do you do it? Well, it's slightly different from the regular jab. From the front, it doesn't look that much different. So instead of a regular jab being here, like this, the half jab is going to go from here like this. Now I can see straight away some of you are going to say, well, yeah, you are open. Yes, you are open. That's one of the disadvantages. From here, in this position, you can see there's a gap around here where I can get hit by an overhand right. From here though, the advantage of this technique is that I can look straight down the glove at my target and I can line it up like this, and then when I'm ready, pop, and I can send that out. Now, firstly, the jab moves only half the distance, but here's the clever thing. There's no real loss of speed. We've measured this before, and the loss of speed is about 5% over the, the jab traveling the full distance, but it gets there in far less time, giving our opponent far less time to react from it. To, sorry, to react to it. So, when the jab is here like this, the other advantage is because it travels less distance, you have less of a chance to see my shoulder or my elbow move when the jab is coming out. On a normal full length jab, you'll be able to see a little bit of movement. You've got a better chance of reacting to it. With the half jab from here, there's not a great deal of time to react to it. So it's a little bit quicker. Disadvantages, like I've said, you're not as well protected, but there are ways around that. I can use a cross arm defense here, like this. I can move there. Okay, hopefully you can see the screen up there. Uh, we've got the Everlast pick monitor shoved into my glove here, just loosely put into there. And uh, I'm gonna do a couple of the different types of jab, and then you'll be able to see the difference in the speed and in terms of the retraction time. So we can measure the g-force, we can measure the speed, and we can measure the retraction. I haven't warmed up, so this is not with a warm-up, but you'll get the feeling of what's going on. Hopefully you'll be able to see that screen there. So firstly, I'm going to do a regular jab from here. Again, 344 milliseconds an hour um, retraction, and the speed is 17.4 kilometers an hour. Now we'll try the half jab, and we'll see what we're losing and what we're gaining by doing that. So from here, seventeen point eight kilometers an hour, no loss of speed. Eighteen kilometers an hour. Retraction time one hundred and twenty eight milliseconds. 18 kilometers now, a bit rubbish on the retraction time, 312 milliseconds. As you can see, there is virtually no difference between the two punches as to whether you throw a half jab or a jab from here. The trade-off is whether or not you can see the elbow move, whether you've got more time to see the punch going, but the actual time it's landing, it, at the speed at which it's landing, is the same. Like I said, the trade-off is whether or not you've got that gap in here. My suggestion is, if you've got an opponent who's thrown an overhand right at you all the time, if you're not doing this, I wouldn't use the half jab. If they're throwing a lot of right hooks, I would be very careful about using the half jab. But if you're getting beat to the punch off someone, then I suggest that the half jab is very good. And I also like it because you can line it up like this, and I can line up my opponent across the top here, 
And here's a dead good hint. If every time I'm throwing my jab and you move 10 centimeters this way and I keep moving by 10 centimeters, here's the trick. Aim off by 10 centimeters. If they move that way 10 centimeters or 20 centimeters, aim off that way by 20 centimeters. Just aim off and pop and you'll find your jab is landing with a great deal more success. So there's a bit of a trade-off between one, but there's a lot of advantages in the other. I'll leave it to you to decide whether or not you want to use the half jab, but it's an extremely useful technique when used in the right circumstance, and one that you should certainly practice in your training. Hope you found that useful. Don't forget to check out our footwork training system as well, because that's gonna give you some great tips as to how to improve your footwork to get into range and out of range, how to fight in and out of corners, how to use rotational footwork. So I'll leave it to you whether you decide to use the half jab, but if you find that you're getting beaten to the jab by your opponent, and let's face it, the jab, it can be a power punch, but pretty much the quicker the jab, the better. If you're getting beaten to the, pun to the punch by your opponent, it's certainly worth trying.